So we're going to move on now to our next technique of integration, which is known as integration by parts. So the first method we looked at is substitution. And you know, we, we understand substitution essentially as, as trying to reverse engineer the chain rule, right? We're trying to reverse the steps in the chain rule. So substitution is something that it applies inherently to situations where you have function composition. But of course, going backwards, you have to be a little bit lucky because when you take the derivative of a composition, right, the chain rule gives you that extra bit, the derivative of the inside, right? You gotta multiply by the derivative of the inside. And if that's not there, Substitution doesn't always work out for you, right? So, so we know, for example, you know, if uh, if we had to do something like you know x e to the x squared, that's a classic example of something that you would do by substitution, right? You're going to substitute the exponent x squared. U will be x squared. Du will be two x dx, right? So that missing two, you have to divide by it e to the u becomes e to the u, which of course is e to the x squared, right? You've done enough of these by now that you can probably do that in one go. You may not even have to write down the u substitution. Of course, if you have to write it down, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But what if you just had x e to the x? How do you do that, right? Now, substitution doesn't get you anywhere. What are you going to do? You could let u equal to x, um, but then you just, you're just changing the letter. Let u equal to e to the x. Um, well then, you know, d, yeah, that's not going to get you anywhere either. You're going to bring logs in. It's going to, no, that's going to be a mess. Um, so what you do is you think of this and you say, well, you know what? That's a product, right? So far, we've been focused on reversing the chain rule. Maybe you can also try to reverse the product rule, right? So we think about that. And we realize that there's one problem, right? When you reverse the product rule, right? If I have f of x times g of x, right? When you take the derivative of a product of two functions, we know that you get, well, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first one times the derivative of the second. Fine. Well, we don't have, we don't have both halves of the product here, do we? We have x e to the x. You know, so this is one product, right? And so typically what happens when you're, when you're doing integration by parts, right? The part is that you have part of a product rule derivative. You have one of the two halves, right? And so what you try to do is you say, well, you know, maybe I can work this in such a way that the second half of this product rule derivative is something that I could sort of reverse on its own. And if I brought that over to the other side, then the thing that I'm trying to integrate could be written in terms of two other things where I, I know what I'm doing, right? And so we think about this. And the way you do it is you say, okay, so... What I really want to do here is say, okay, if I had, say, u times v, right, we still are going to do sort of a substitution here. So we say uv prime, right, the derivative of u times v will be u prime v plus uv prime, right? Um, or maybe if you write this in terms of, of differentials, d of uv, right, would be v times du plus u times dv. So you decide to work with one half, and usually, usually you work with this half. You say, okay, I'm going to go with that. And so what you do is you come over here and you have to decide. One of these two is going to be my u. The other is going to combine with dx to be dv, right? And so you think about your choices, and you say, okay, well, one choice I have is I could say that this is so this x e to the x dx, I could think of this as, you know, x times e to the x dx. So this will be my u. This will be my dv. And then you think about reversing that, and you say, okay, well, if, if, if that's dv, e to the x dx is dv, um, well, this would suggest that v is e to the x, right? 
And so then you think about trying to put things together here and you say, okay, well, uv then, so d, u, x will be, so u is x, v is e to the x, okay? And then we say, okay, so v, well, here's v, v is e to the x. Um, u is just x with this identification, so du is just dx, so this is e to the x times dx. And u dv, that's the thing that we want, right? x e to the x dx, okay? Well, that seems like it's going to work, right? Now, the other option that you could have tried, and just, just to point out that we are on the right path here, right? You, you do have choices. You could have also written this as, you could have said, well, let's do e to the x and then x dx, okay? And so I say that's my u and that's my dv. You could make that choice. Why don't you want to make that choice, right? Well, if, if x dx is dv, right, the way I would get that would be if v was one half x squared, right? And if u is e to the x, then du is just e to the x dx, right? Um, and then I'd be looking at something where I would say, okay, in, in, in this format, my d of x e to the x, I'm thinking of this is my u times v. Uh, well, oh, but it wouldn't be, right? x e to the x anymore, it's going to be x squared over 2, right? And then I get, so my v times du is going to be 1 half x squared times e to the x times dx, and then my u dv, which is the thing that I want, right? e to the x times x dx, right? And so like this is the integral I'm trying to evaluate, and we realize that to evaluate it, I'm going to have to replace it by this, which is harder, right? The power of x has gone up. So generally when you're doing integration by parts, if there is a power of x in there, you probably want that to be your u, because when you take the derivative, the power goes down, simplifies the integral, right? So the way this ends up looking, the whole thing, if you put it all together, is we say, okay, so the integral of x e to the x dx is, okay? So we think about taking the integral of, of each part of this, right? Right? Well, the integral of a differential just gives me back the thing that I took the differential of. So x e to the x equals the integral of e to the x dx plus the integral that I want, okay? So I want to solve for this, I just have to move that over. So what I get is that this is equal to x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x dx, and of course we know how to do that, right? So we get x e to the x minus e to the x plus a constant, okay? So this is, this is the routine for integration by parts, right? We're going to see some examples that are more complicated than this one, but this is the general idea. So integration by parts is going to come into play when you recognize that you've got a product, and a product where you can simplify things by making the correct identifications, right? Making the identifications of u and dv and working your way down. Uh, best way to get the hang of this is to do a whole bunch of examples, and that's what we're going to do in the following videos.